There is a deliberateness to the photographs of Evelyn Hofer that can be seen in each of her portraits, whether it be people or places, of New York City in the 1960s and 70s. The hairstyles and hats speak to the eras of boofins and afros, of bombs and the Bowery, and train stations and tracks that are no longer in use or have been modified beyond recognition. Her subjects, the policeman with his long black coat and hands in white gloves, the boys on the stoop, the hot dog stand worker, the bar flies, and the older woman looking regal with her light purple flower, stare forthrightly at the camera. It was all by design. Hofer took her photographs with a German, large format 4x5 camera that could only be used with a tripod, explained Andreas Pauli, her former longtime assistant and friend, and one of the editors of a new book, New York by Evelyn Hofer. The new book reprises some of Hofer city portraits of its denizens, buildings, landmarks and architecture from a 1965 book called New York proclaimed with text by British writer V. S. Pritchett as well as including some of her photographs from the 70s. I think she was very careful in the composition, and this is when you work with a big camera, you take much more care about compassing an image versus snapping with a small camera and I think you can see that, Polly told Daily Mail. Calm. She would always ask people if they were willing to be photographed, Polly said. And then she had to put up her tripod, her camera, get the film ready. So for her, taking portraits even on the street, it was always a collaboration with the people, he said. Hofer was born in Germany in 1922, and her family fled 11 years later to Switzerland to escape the Nazis. Hofer moved to New York City in 1946 and would document the city with her camera. She died in 2009 in Mexico City. Polly became her assistant in 1982, working with her both in Europe and New York. Even during the time period, Hofer's camera choice was unusual, he recalled. Compared to other photographers, she took much more time for taking one image, Polly said. An early assignment with Hofer in Rome showed Polly how she approached her work. The first day, she went to the place without taking the camera. And I was quite surprised, and I asked her, why don't we take the equipment and everything? She said, well, you know, Andreas, it's important for me to get the feeling from a place, and I just want to absorb the atmosphere. He added, and then later on she made notes in her little notebook what she found, what she felt, and then only the second day we started to photograph. Her camera was from the 50s, and she used old lenses as well, because she liked the quality. It also required a black cloth that she had to drape over the viewfinder to see the image, which was upside down, he explained. Share this article share it's quite another way to photograph compared to modern cameras, Polly said. Hofer was also very careful in choosing whether or not a photograph should be in color or in black and white, he explained. For instance, Hot Dog Stand from 1963 is in color the decorative banner in hot pink, yellow and blue that rims the light green stand pops against the white top, apron and pants of the worker, while the red of the Pepsi logo on the wood crate stands out. In another color photo, Policeman, 59th Street from 1964, contrasts the black of the officer's uniform with the bright red of the Miller High Life billboard ad with its slogan Enjoy Life. Old Woman, Chinatown from 1964, which also doubles as the book's cover, was not a planned image, Polly said. An older woman, wearing a black cardigan and beaded hat, 
and a dark gray dress accented with a blue necklace and a light purple blossom, stares straight ahead, with a young boy on her left, and a woman wearing black shades on her right. I think she saw it, and then she stopped and put up her camera, he said. It must have been Chinese New Year, because there were a lot of people standing on the streets, I could see that from the other images and they were watching the firecrackers and the dragons. Another shot that Hofer decided should be in color was arteries from 1964, which shows avenues, highways, and streets on the west side, and Paulisetti thinks that it is the area where the Port Authority bus terminal is now. That's why she called it arteries, that's where all the traffic comes in New York, he said, noting that she probably took the image from a building overlooking the area. Holly said that other photos were better suited for black and white. Hofer took many shots of architecture and one image, West Side Brownstones, from 1965 is almost hypnotic in its undulating image of the building's stoops. This works only in black and white so, because of the light and shadow, he said. Doc Powley said that he thinks another image, the Bowery from 1963, was also not planned. I think she was going through the streets and she must have seen these people sitting at the bar, he explained. The black and white photo shows three men in a row inside a bar, the establishment's window with its neon signs, and advertising it has beer. Polly said she took a shot of the man in the middle by himself, and then when the other two joined him, she took an image of all three. This image speaks to a different era of the city, Manhattan's Bowery was once known for being an enclave of the homeless and had the moniker Skid Row. It was always the home to famous punk bars such as CBGB, where bands including the Ramans played. This neighborhood is now gentrified and home to the city's priciest places. The new book also documents neighborhoods such as Soho, Chinatown, Times Square, Lower Manhattan, Upper East Side, Coney Island, Kitts Bays, Little Italy and Harlem, and iconic landmarks in places such as the Manhattan Bridge and Central Park. It includes portraits of people working, such as a woman in a toll booth a doorman, and a man holding a sign, and of past professions such as an elevator man. Many of the images that Hofer took in the 60s was for the 1965 book New York Proclaimed, which included text by British writer B. S. Pritchett. While working on an exhibition in Munich with curator Sabine Schmidt, the other editor of New York, they decided that it's a pity that you can't get these books anymore. They decided to re-edit the book, with more of a focus on Hofer's images. New York proclaimed had a lot of text, Polly said, and that was, I think, partly the S. Pritchett, partly Evelyn Hofer's images, which had, of course, a connection, we thought we would concentrate on her photography, and so it should be mostly a photography book. But then we thought it would need something, and that's why we asked the writer to write a little piece on these images, he said. New York, which is published by Steed, does include an essay by John Haskell. We added a few more images from the 70s, he said, noting there is one photograph from 1981. We thought they might fit well in that kind of book. That's why the pictures are slightly different than from the original book from 1964. He added, it was not everything was our choice, it was also her choice. Hofer was quite strict, he said about her images, and if she didn't like it, she most likely would destroy it. She also marked her contact prints with the photos she liked. So since I was working with her for more than 20 years, I knew more or less what images were important to her, he explained. That's why it wasn't so hard to choose images. 
at one point it was more difficult to eliminate images. Pauli said that they became good friends after working together for so long, and he took over managing her photo estate around 2000. The last images she took in 2000, and then she got more ill, and she had an operation, and then her dementia got worse, so then that's why she didn't work anymore, he recalled. When she died in 2009, he said he took care of the estate on his own. Over Hofer's career, she tackled different subject matters and genres. Her first book was on Florence, 1959 Stones of Florence, and was purely architectural, he said. Later on, she did more and more portraits, so the last of these series of books, which was from 67, and it's a book on Dublin, and it's...